Hi, my name is Andrea with Foodimentary Adventures in Food. And today I'm sharing quick and easy grocery store dinner kits for those nights when you need to get dinner on the table in a hurry. If you like this video, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. So the first meal that we're making is Kraft Spaghetti Classics Tangy Italian. I've opened up the box so you all can see what's inside of it. It comes with some spaghetti noodles and the spaghetti noodles are pretty short so they're not very long at all. It also comes with grated Parmesan cheese, the Tangy Italian Herb Spice Mix, and then you need a can of tomato paste. And on the back of the box, it gives you a variation. You can stir in a half a pound of ground beef and garlic powder. So that is what I'm doing. I've already cooked up my ground beef and added garlic powder to it. So let's get started. So I've got my spaghetti noodles boiling away and now I'm going to start working on the sauce portion. So I am adding in my tomato paste and there is a variation on the box that says if you don't have tomato paste, you can use tomato sauce and it tells you how much of that you can use, but I have tomato paste so that is what I'm using. Next, the directions say to add in two cans of water. Um, and so I am just using 12 ounces of water because it's a six ounce can. And now I'm adding in that tangy Italian spice mix. And then I'm just gonna stir everything up and let this come to a boil. Okay, so the sauce has been simmering away for about 10 minutes and now I'm going to add in my ground beef. Okay, so here is dinner and I tasted the spaghetti and it is very good. I really didn't think it would be enough for four people like the box says, but it actually is. If you have four average eaters, it's plenty. And then of course, you know, I added half a pound of ground beef to, you know, fill it out a little bit, make it a meaty meal. And it is absolutely pretty delicious. I buy it again and I'm serving it with a breadstick and also a salad. Uh, we're going to be using the Trader Joe's. Well, I'm gonna be using Trader Joe's when we get to the table, and then Howard is going to be using this. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight, and we will see y'all next time. So for dinner tonight, I'm gonna to be trying out this tasty Korean-style barbecue beef dinner kit. It's supposed to serve pot five people. So in the box, you get this um, like Korean sauce. It's a liquid and then you get a dry seasoning mix that you are supposed to coat your beef with, and you also get some rice. To make the dinner kit, you need, um, it calls for a pound of sirloin steak. I had this um, flank steak in my freezer. It's a pound, and that's what I'm gonna, going to use. It also calls for green onions, but the green onions are optional. And then it also calls for a red bell pepper. So the first thing that you're supposed to do is start your rice. And then while your rice is cooking, they want you to go ahead and slice up your beef and then add that dry seasoning package to coat it. Okay, so I've got my rice cooking away and now I'm adding in my beef. I added that seasoning packet in and it really smells pretty good. And then it says to also add in your bell peppers. Oops. And I'm just gonna let this cook until that beef is done. So the meat is cooked and I'm gonna add in my green onions. It says to use the green onions as a garnish, but I just tasted some of the meat and it doesn't have a whole lot of flavor. So I think that'll help it out. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add in that sauce packet now. It says to drizzle it um, after you put the meat and veggies on the rice, but I feel like it needs some flavor. So I'm going to add about half. Okay, so here is our dinner all plated up, serving it over the rice that came with it. It actually came with long grain rice, not jasmine rice. 
Um, and I'm not a huge fan of long grain rice, but um, Howard and I both tasted it and we both said it really lacks flavor. And mind you, I did add in that sauce packet. I ended up adding it all, not just half, um, but still not a lot of flavor. We both said the same thing, probably would not repurchase this again. By the time you, you, know, you buy your beef and buy your vegetables, you could have just gone to your favorite Asian restaurant and ordered this. Um, it says that it serves five. I think that's a bit of a stretch. Um, it would probably serve three um, comfortably. But anyway, this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we will see y'all next time. So for dinner tonight, we are having arroz con pollo from HEB. HEB is a grocery store that is local to Texas. It is uh, chicken and rice. And the only thing that you need for this dinner kit is chicken. So inside the box, you get a seasoning packet and you get the rice. And for the chicken, it says that you can use boneless, skinless chicken breast or thighs. And that is what I'm using chicken thighs. It's a pound and I've cut it up into chunks. And the directions say to start off by browning up your chicken. Okay, so per the directions, I've got my oil heating in the pan and I'm just adding in my chicken and I'm just gonna let this cook until the chicken is cooked through. So my chicken is brown and it says to stir in the rice mixture next and to get that brown as well. So it's been a couple of minutes and I'm adding in my water. I'm adding in two cups of water. It says for a firmer rice to use two cups of water. For I guess like a moister, fluffier rice, use two and a half. Um, but I do not like like an overly done rice. I'm adding in the seasoning packet now. And it says to bring this mixture to a hard boil. And then I'm just gonna cover and let this simmer until that rice is cooked. It says about 25 minutes. Okay, so here is everything all plated up. Howard and I tried the arroz con pollo and we both think it's pretty good. Howard said that it reminded him kind of, of like um, Cajun food, like jambalaya. Um, it is really flavorful. It's not spicy, but it is really good. It has a good flavor. As you can see, my rice is firm. I did add, again, half a cup less of water as the, water, as the recipe recommended for firmer rice. That's how I like my rice, pretty firm. But it is good. I'm serving it with some buttered corn and a side of avocado. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight, and we will see y'all next time. So for dinner tonight, I am making this Chef Boyardee Pizza Maker Kit, traditional, and it comes with a can of the Pizza Maker sauce, and then it comes with two pouches for the dough. So it says that the box makes two 12-inch pizzas. Let me flip it over for you. But it also says for a thicker crust, you can make it in a 13 by nine pan. So that's what I'm gonna do. I guess it's gonna be kind of like a deep dish pizza. And then it says right here, for a lighter baked crust, you can bake it, I'm sorry, mix together the um, packages in the warm water and then let it sit for 20 minutes for a lighter baked crust. So that's what I'm gonna do. So what I'm getting ready to do right now is to mix up these two patches, add the water, it says mix it until it's a soft dough, and then add a little bit of oil on top and cover it and then just let it sit for 20 minutes. Okay, so my pizza dough rose for about half an hour instead of 22 minutes. I got kind of busy with my toddler who was having a snack um, kind of right next to me. So you may hear him from time to time. Um, so what, what I'm doing right now is spreading out this pizza dough. Um, I have a greased nine by 13 pan. The direction said to grease it with uh, cooking spray, but I use this garlic ghee instead. It's a clarified butter. So I'm just gonna spread this out. Now I'm going to add my pizza sauce. It seems like a lot. So don't know if I'm gonna add the whole can. And I tasted the pizza sauce and it's not sweet at all. As you can see, it's kind of runny, but it's definitely not a sweet sauce. Okay, so that's about 
a third of the can that I added in. I think I'm gonna stop there because I feel like otherwise, if I added this entire can, it's just gonna be very, very soupy. And now I'm going to add in my cheese. I'm using a pizza blend cheese. I'm gonna use the entire package here. And now I'm going to add my meat. I have some cooked Italian sausage, I have some pepperoni, and then I also have some onions. All right, so now I am just going to pop this into the oven. My oven is preheated to 425 minutes, and I think it says to bake it for about 35 minutes or until that crust is done. Okay, so I let the pizza bake for 30 minutes. I took it out, it, I let it cool for about half an hour, cut out a slice, and here it is on the plate. So, um, I don't know if you can tell on camera, but it is pretty thick and fluffy. It's definitely cooked all the way through. Let me try to show you the bottom crust here. So it's cooked all the way through. I will say it tastes more bread-like than pizza-like. And in hindsight, I wish I had made either just one pizza or made two separate pizzas because the crust is pretty thick, thicker than I thought it would be. I was concerned about the amount of sauce in the can, so if you remember, I didn't add it all, but it kind of made the pizza dry, so just FYI. All right, but this is what we are having for dinner tonight, and we will see y'all next time. So now I am sharing the last box dinner kit of the week. I hope you all have enjoyed this video so far. If you have, I'd love it if you hit the like button and subscribe button. It would really help our channel out a lot. But I'm including this one as a bonus because I did find it on clearance. I'm not sure if Walmart is selling these or not, but if you happen to find it on clearance or if you happen to have it in your pantry, still wanted to give a review. So. This is chicken and broccoli, great value, so it's from Walmart. It's an orzo pasta mix with creamy cheese sauce, broccoli, and chicken flavored seasoning. So in the box, you get the dry mix, and then you get the creamy broccoli sauce, so it's kind of like, um, it's like a cheese sauce. And then you get the orzo, and then it calls for a pound of chicken breast, but I am using a pound of um, boneless skinless chicken thighs because that's just our preference and water so all I'm going to do is start off by cooking that chicken breast I'm sorry chicken thighs cooking them all the way done and then I'm just gonna add in my water and then the two seasoning packets okay so my meat is cooked you just saw me add in water now I'm adding in orzo and going to add in my dry spices. And then I'm going to add in that cheese packet. I'm gonna give it a good stir. And it says to um, bring the mixture to a boil and then cover and then let it simmer for like seven to nine minutes. Um, if you've never cooked with orzo before, orzo is a type of pasta and it cooks really, really quickly. So I'm just squeezing this all out. Just gonna let it boil and then uh, cover it up. So dinner is ready and I did have to cook it longer than nine minutes, probably for about 13 minutes, but it is very good. Um, hopefully Walmart will sell this again, I'm not sure, but it is a really tasty dish. Very creamy, very cheesy. And then I am serving it with a side of green beans that I doctored up with seasoned salt and butter. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight, and we will see y'all next time.